Hi friends, it's your girl Larissa, aka La to the R E double S. Hey, welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you are new here, this is a place on the internet where I help fellow real estate brothers and sisters keep it real estate so you can become that real estate agent. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make client intake forms with dun dun, Google Forms. It is amazing. And this is a wonderful mobile alternative compared to fillable PDFs, which I've done a tutorial on my channel before. So check the video in the cards above or in the description box down below. This again is great for mobile use. And of course, this is free. And you know, us real estate agents, we love free. So let's just get right into this. So of course you want to go to your Google Drive. And what I recommend you to do is to create a designated folder called Google Forms. And in that Google Forms folder, create another folder that's just for buyer and seller intake forms. Now I've already made mine up. Now I'm not going to necessarily per se in this video show you step-by-step -step each question because I actually have this template available for purchase on my Etsy shop. So both this form and the PDF forms are available for purchase on my shop. Again, link in the description box down below or scan this code right here to get what you can get. Now, what I do want to share with you in this video is just a few minor backend things that you do want to make sure that is turned on to make sure that you get the information that you need in the most seamless way. So first things first, you can just right click and just hit Google form here in blank form. Click on that. And then this is what you're going to be working with. Go ahead and just name this buyer form, seller form. But before we kind of build this all out, what I typically like to do is the aesthetics, if you will. Now, I recommend making your Google banner form with Canva. So I actually have this made up over on this tab here. Now, this is a custom design. So let's go into file here. This is a 1600 by 400 pixels design. If you don't know how to create a custom design, just go again to Canva, go to, this is the main homepage, create a design. And you can see down here, custom design and go ahead and put that 1600 by 400 pixels. So once you have that made, this is what that looks like. Now, if you have yet to create your own logo with Canva, watch the previous video. I will link it in the cards above in the description box down below because we made this logo in Canva. Amazing, right? So you just want to download this as a PNG JPEG and then you should be pretty much set to go. So if we go back into our blank form we just made, if we go over here to customize theme, click on that. Now you can also change the header, the, the font text here. So the header question and text down here. So in this case, I'm just going to change this to Playfair display questions. I like just Arial and I am in the way. <laughs> you just want to hit uh, choose image as the header here. So go ahead, click that. Then you can just upload here. You can drag your file. So let's just go into here. This is my banner, as you see here. And I'm just going to open that up. And once you do, the nice thing is, is when you just click done because perfect dimensions made on Canva, click done and then give it a second to load. And once it loads, it actually pulls in your colors. Look at that, see, beautiful. So you can actually change the colors as well, the background, things like that. But I mean, it's done it perfectly, which is exactly what we want. And in this case for the form here, you can just name this buyer questionnaire or buyer form or whatever have you put in some kind of description here to let you to let your buyers know what this all entails and go ahead and build out your questions now now that you know how to make your form look branded i'm going to go back into this form over here because it's already filled out so it just makes it a lot easier for me to show you so again go ahead and put a bit of a description here and let them know what they're about to get into now you can see here this is my form here it's comprised of six sections which i will show you how to create sections and the different kind of questions you can put in here now again this template is available for purchase on my etsy shop so you can steal my homework just take this and you will be off and running so if we go over here to this plus section that's where you can add a question but if you go over here add section this is where you can add a section so let's go back into this blank form here and just go ahead and add section 
And so that way you can have different multiple sections based on what you want to ask your clients. So this, so this could be just one section on contact information, another section, basically questions related to their motivation of why they are buying, what, how much they are qualified for, things like that. And just break it down into sections so it's not like a roof. Eh, I'm tongue twisted, not a full running list of a million questions. It's nice when it's broken up into sections so it makes it easy to fill it out, if you know what I mean. So the nice thing about the Google Forms here is that you can have different styles of questions. So if I go in and just click this plus button, it's gonna add a question to section three. Now here we have multiple choice. We have short answer, paragraph, check boxes, drop down, uh, linear scale, multiple choice grid, checks, check box grid. Now these ones I've never really used all that often, but uh, I learned how to use them in here. So let's go back to my template here. So the kind of questions that I have here, where are you? Are questions like this, like this. So this is the fifth section. This is property requirements per se. And so this here, if I click on this, this is a multiple choice grid. So basically what you do is you have your rows you create your rows of the specific item and then the column is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, things like that. So when you click out of here, it brings, this is what it looks like. Ooh, this is what it looks like. So this is basically the rows and then these are the columns here. So when your buyer does to fill, goes to fill out this question, they just pick, okay, bedrooms, I want three. Bathrooms, you know, so it's basically like multiple questions in one question, if that makes sense. So that's really nice to use. Another one I have here, I don't think it's down here. It's probably in my seller form here. Let's go back to here, my seller form. Let's open this. Open. Google Forms, okay. Another question I have here that was really interesting of the way that I formatted it was, let's see here. No, that's the same multiple choice kind of question here. I think I lied. Okay, so most of my questions are just um, multiple choice and check boxes. Now this one, this in this case, this question here is check boxes because they can choose more than one. If you just give them a multiple choice answer, they can only choose one. So if you have, in this case, what days are best for showing availability or what days are best for home previewing or showings, you can I recommend putting it as checkboxes so that they can choose more than one option in one day as well. But if you want to learn more about the different style of questions that Google Form has, just Google it and Google will tell you how to use the Google questions. Very simple, very easy. Now, going back to what I really want to show you instead is the kind of backend things that you want to make sure that you have turned on. So let's go back into my buyer questionnaire here. Now, in this case, I have already filled out this question there so that I can have a response in here. And so if I go over to preview, if you hit the I button, you can actually see it's going to open up another tab and it's going to show you what this looks like in, um, in, in the view of when you send it to your clients. So again, they can fill this out on, you know, on their phones or they can fill this out on desktop like we are doing right now. But one thing I put in here is this progress bar, which I think is really nice to have because if there's going to be a lot of questions, you want to see if, it, if it's moving along quickly or not. So the way you want to turn that on is if you go back into your backend form here, you want to go into, I believe it is settings. Let me check my notes. Settings, presentation, settings, go into presentations here and you want to turn on show progress bar. So toggle that on. Now, the next thing you also want to turn on here is in regards to responses, I like to turn this on. So if you go to the response tab, go to the three dots, I turn on get email notifications for new responses. So that way, when somebody fills this out, you're going to get an email saying, hey, this person to fill it out. Click here to check what they have filled out, which is really nice. Now, the next thing that I want you to turn on as well is if we go over to settings, settings and go into responses here i turn do not collect so collect email addresses i say do not collect because in this case when you have this turned off 
anybody can fill this form out. So this means they don't necessarily need, need to have a Google account to fill out a Google form. So that's why I turn that off. And of course, in your questions, you do want to make sure that you have email. Now, one thing to notice here, I know I'm going all over the place here, but in this case, I have some questions that are required and some questions that are not. So typically with contact, I have the contact questions as all required. That's why you'll see that red asterisk at the top there. I'm in the, in the view, but you can see how that asterisk is there. So that means they cannot continue on to the next, next question or the next section if they don't fill out the required section. So I keep those on and the rest, some of the questions may be relevant, relevant to them. It may be applicable to them. It may not be applicable to them, but in that case, uh, yeah, I just kind of keep just the contact questions as required. Now that's pretty much it. So before you send out again, this form, whether it's a buyer form or a seller form, I recommend you send it out to a spouse, a friend, yourself, whoever you want to test this out before you're actually sending it to clients. And this is why you'll see responses up here. Now you can see here that I already filled out a response here and you can see how it's already linked to a sheet, but I'll show you how to link it to a sheet in just a section, a second, because there is one more thing that I do want to show you about settings. I know I'm sorry. I'm ping ponging back and forth, but in settings, if you go down to again, the presentations here. So this was, let's say we collapse this response and then presentation. You also have the option to change your confirmation message. So this is right after they have completed it. And then you can just put something here. Just thank you. I'll be in touch soon. Or you can just keep it at, at that. But again, you can play around with all of these different settings that you like. But typically, these are just kind of the three, four that I like turned off or turned on in my sense. So if I go over to my seller questionnaire, this one is not linked to anything yet because there's no responses at all so it's it, right now accepting responses is toggled on but it's not linked to a sheet so typically it's this is what it's going to look like when you have no responses but once you get one response in you can go ahead and link to sheets you could link this to a sheet right now if you wanted to so if we just click on this we can just create a new spreadsheet now remember how i told you to create a specific designated folder uh, when you just create a new spreadsheet spreadsheet it will save it in that same folder you made for your designated forms now this is what this is going to look like again there's nothing in here but again you can see here at the top these are all of your questions up here so typically what i like to do is kind of clean that up so it's easier for me to read now i've already done that for my previous buyer questionnaire so if i refresh this here the copy of the seller questionnaire is what we just linked to this here, but this is the one, this here, buyer questionnaire, is linked to this one here. Yep. So I am just going to click on this here because this already has a response filled in. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. But as you can see here, I have just basically uh, made the top row here in the gray color so it's easy to see and I just fixed up the formatting the text wrapping so I can see the full question now again some questions have more than one answer so you can see here for this particular question how would you describe your lifestyle this question had is, is also a check box question so they can check more than one and you can see here that entertaining others slash parties is one one answer and then it's separated by a comma and then family friendly is another answer. So that's kind of how that works if you have multiple uh, answers and questions and things like that. Now, the nice thing about this spreadsheet is that it will, if you have multiple answers, it will already freeze the first row. So even if you scroll all the way down, your questions are still at the top. So it's easy to read. Now that's pretty much it when it comes to your Google form. Again, both of these templates are available on my Etsy shop in combination with the pdfs that i already have created so they are complementary to each other so i highly recommend you check them both out and if you want to learn how to send an automatic email after someone fills out your google form then check out this video right over here it's a zapier automation tutorial and it is amazing so get ready to click in three two one